Have you ever wondered what makes Emacs the powerhouse it is? Beyond the customization and key bindings, there's a universe of intricate code powering everything that you do. This video isn't just about Emacs, it's about understanding its internals. In 2025, text editors are everywhere. Slick, fast, lightweight, AI-powered, and yet Emacs endures. Why? Well, because Emacs isn't just an editor. It's a programmable platform, a Lisp machine designed as a text interface. Though it has a powerful, clean interface. It's what lies beneath. Understanding its core transforms how you use it, from running commands to shaping how Emacs itself behaves. At the heart of Emacs is Emacs Lisp. It's not just a scripting layer, it's the operating system that we call Emacs. Every key press, every command, every plugin are all written in or driven by Emacs Lisp. And the architecture? Think of it like this. Buffers hold the content, windows display portions of buffers, and frames are what we usually think of as windows in your operating system. Every part of Emacs, from text content to how it is displayed on the screen, is accessible and controllable through Emacs Lisp. Hooks let you run your code at precise moments, like when you open a file or save one. Advice lets you override or wrap existing functions, changing behavior easily in Emacs without rewriting core code. Want to auto-format code when saving? Simply add a hook. Want to log every buffer save silently? Use advice. It's that flexible and that powerful. But how does Emacs turn all this into what you see on your screen? Emacs has a display engine that runs on top of X11, GTK, or even the terminal. It takes internal data, buffers, overlays, text properties, and renders it as pixels. As for syntax highlighting, that's handled by font lock mode. It uses regular expressions and parsing functions to apply styles called faces to the text. Modern Emacs has native compilation, deferred fontification, and even rendering optimizations for large files. Despite its reputation, VS Code is often heavier and slower than Emacs, especially on lower spec systems. With native compilation and a lean configuration, Emacs can feel snappier and more responsive. In its core, Emacs interplays C and Lisp. So where does Emacs Lisp end and where does the C core begin? Below level primitives, things like file, I.O., buffer creation or memory management happen there. These are exposed to Emacs Lisp as primitive functions. When you call car or length or insert, you're often calling C. This dual layer design is key. Lisp gives you flexibility, C gives you speed. Understanding how Emacs handles performance lets you make smarter choices in your configuration and code. Use primitive functions when speed matters. Avoid unnecessary memory allocations. Tune variables like GCON's threshold to reduce pauses and keep an eye on memory usage. Emacs uses a stop the world garbage collector with a generational strategy. While it isn't real time, it is tunable. Packages like GCMH, Garbage Collector Magic Hack, can help manage collection intervals automatically, making Emacs feel faster and more responsive during editing. All of this, from buffers to hooks, rendering engines to see eternals, exists because of one thing, the Emacs community. Thousands of developers, writers, and testers contribute to Emacs. On mailing lists, in patches, through packages, and in conversations like this one. Emacs is part of GNU, and its future includes native Wayland support, better JSON RPC capabilities, and deeper AI integration. But these features don't just appear. People like you help to build them. You don't have to be a sea wizard to contribute. Start with documentation, write an ELISP patch, file a bug report. Everything helps, and everything matters. Emacs isn't just an editor you open and use. It's something you can change, shape, and make your own. Knowing how it works under the hood doesn't just make you smarter. It lets you fix things, tweak how it behaves, and build new features. If you've made it this far, you're already ahead of most. So grab the source, explore the code, 
write some Lisp or C and maybe send a patch. Emacs stays alive because people like you keep improving it.